Hey guys, how's it going? This week I have a very, very special guest. I have Professor Suzanne Devkota, and Suzanne and I actually have something in common. She did her master's at the same lab where I did my PhD. So uh, now she is a gut microbiome expert, and you are at UCLA? Yep. So today we're going to talk about a couple topics in the gut microbiome. Now the first thing I want to ask you is I get a lot of questions about um, artificial sweeteners. So people are really worried. Um, you know, I've, I've, I guess people have kind of put me in the stance that I'm pro artificial sweetener, mm -hmm. which is not really the case. I'm just, what I've said is based on the data, they don't appear to have really any negative health consequences. Um, but there are some people who have claimed based on some research that they're bad for the gut microbiome. What is your take on the research that's out there regarding artificial sweeteners? So, I have not seen any convincing human studies on artificial sweeteners um, and the gut microbiome mm -hmm. suggesting that they're, they're detrimental. Um, there have been some studies in rodents um, that had, I think, some uh, metabolic defects, you know, obesity promoting and, and so on. Um, uh, but those studies um, had, had some issues with them that, you know, I think make it difficult to extrapolate to humans. Um, you know, my general stance regarding this is I think you first have to focus on um, the big the big things and the big picture if you're talking about if you're talking about diet. And so if you have um, everything right about your diet, if you got your macros right, you're eating fiber and you happen to be putting artificial sweeteners in your coffee and um, in your pancake syrup or some substitutes, I see no problem with that at mm -hmm. all. Um, as long as you got the big stuff right, because the big stuff will overtake the fact that you're using artificial sweeteners. I mean, I think right. people think of food additives the same as they think of drugs, you know, and yeah. they're, and it's going to like selectively manipulate things, but food additives are a component of food. And if they can be completely drowned out by the fact that if you're eating your fibers and your healthy, all your other healthy foods um, and everything else you're doing right, I personally wouldn't be concerned about the artificial sweeteners. Yeah, I, I think people miss out on the fact that, you know, they would say, is this healthy or is it unhealthy? Right. Singular components typically are healthy or unhealthy. I mean, there's some, there's some caveats. I mean, we know like trans fats don't really have any beneficial effect yeah. to them and it seems to just be negative. But for the most part, um, you know, healthy or unhealthy is in the context of an overall, Absolutely. you know, dietary intake. Yeah. So, you know, I have people who are, are, you know, exercising five times a week and they're tracking their calories and macros and they're so worried about artificial sweeteners. And it's like, you're, I mean, I guess if that stuff's on point, if you want to start worrying about this stuff, okay. But it's like, you're already doing like the, any negative effects are so minimal compared to all the stuff you're already doing right. Yeah. And then if you're somebody who's overeating, you're obese and you're worried about artificial sweeteners, you're really worried about the wrong thing. Yeah. Like you said, it's pretty minor what you can get. Based on the evidence I've seen, the only times they're able to show that artificial sweeteners cause problems are in lab animals when they really pump up the dose. Right. Or they're doing some kind of in vitro study where they're putting a massive dose on, a, on essentially a Petri dish right. and they're seeing a response. And I mean, I think that um, we certainly have seen that if you if you take anything and you give it concentrated enough you can usually cause problems mm -hmm. yeah ab absolutely I mean I use artificial sweeteners but I've I, <gasps> I know I mean I'll drink I, I love a, I love coke zero I'll drink coke zero but I don't add artificial sweeteners to my I just weaned myself off of sugar mm. period so I've just chosen when it's an option to add it to something I've just changed I've just stopped but if it if it comes down to I'm, I'm going to drink a coke zero over a regular coke you know I'm not going to you know I haven't totally sometimes I need that carbonation I just need it but I'm not drinking 10 of them yeah. I'll have one maybe every other day I'm fine with that um, and then I've just eliminated sweetness in general from my food when it's a choice um, like an added adding to the food and then yeah and you know your your taste buds are inducible so if you eat um, you may have a sweet tooth, but if you eat less sweets over time, you will tend to crave less sweets. Yeah. Because it's it's just like salt or, or any other kind of taste or, you know, even like spice. Yeah. So, um, like people who come from countries like Thailand or India where mm -hmm. they use a lot of very spicy food, 
if they taste American food, they can't even taste it because right. it tastes yeah. so bland, right? Yeah, so sure. those those um, taste buds are responsive to what you do. So you can manipulate those through what you do in your diet. So if you're somebody who finds you have a sweet tooth, you can manipulate those to, to be less. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was kind of some of the popular fad diets that are, well, what I consider fad diets. And uh, I, I guess I would exclude the ketogenic diet from that group because I don't really think that's a fad diet. It's been around since the 1800s and there are some potential applications for that. But what do you, you know, we, we talked about, we just had a podcast, we talked about the carnivore diet, um, talked about the ketogenic diet, vegetarian diets. What are your concerns with some of these diets and in terms of how they Im impact the gut microbiome? I think, um, you know, certainly there's the metabolic question and the gut microbiome question. They're often not one, one in the same. So how a diet affects one versus the other are, are different considerations. But um, from a microbiome standpoint, anything that is eliminating a food group from the diet is going to eliminate certain bacteria from, from the gut. So bacteria, you want diversity in the gut microbiome. You want a lot of different kinds of bacteria. The way you get a lot of different kinds of bacteria is to eat a lot of different kinds of food. Um, and so if you're on this carnivore, carniv carnivore diet where you're eating just meat, essentially, you're gonna really promote your um, meat fermenting microbes, um, which um, uh, has the re research has come out showing that you don't want a lot of meat fermentation in the gut. I mean, if you're eating carnivore diet, you're gonna have a lot of it, but regular consumption of, of meat is is normal. That's right. Fine. That's the problem. Is people will take it too far. They take it. They take don't it have too any far. meat. Yeah. Right. And so, likewise, if you go on a vegan diet and you eliminate all your animal proteins and those amino acids from your regular diet, you're also gonna lose those those microbes. And so you need. You need your pro, your diverse amino acid profile. You need your diverse fatty acid profile. You need your diverse um, uh, carbohydrate profile too. And so, I, I'm not a fan of these extreme elimination diets because you lose certain microbes. And if you do it long enough, you can actually permanently lose some of those microbes. Yeah, you were talking about that that they actually can like essentially go extinct in your yeah. in your gut. And you won't get them back. Yeah, um, and there's and there's been studies in rodents, and there's actually a study that came out um, in humans looking at the Hadza hunter-gatherer tribe in Africa. And um, what they found was really interesting is they measure their microbiome over the course of the year and their microbiome follows a cyclical wet dry season shift, which is probably very similar to our ancestors. Um, but then they also took that population and other hunter-gatherer tribes and looked at them, their microbiome compared to westernized populations in China mm -hmm. and Australia and the US and Canada. And what they found was there's a completely different microbiome profile in the Western nations than in the hunter-gatherer tribe nations. And there's some where there's like zero overlap, wow. um, which suggests that really it's sort of diet, because these are diverse nations that they're coming from, mm -hmm. but the diets are very similar, um, that is driving these very different profiles that have very little overlap. And so um, there is something to be said about, you know, what is a hallmark of a Western diet it tends to be you have a narrower food food spectrum. Um, whereas a hunter-gatherer sort of situation, they're kind of living off the land and eating whatever is seasonal and, and, and available at the time, which includes meats and vegetables and everything. Um, and so that, and their diversity is much greater than the Western population. Interesting. And, and the main fuel for a lot of these bacteria is, is fiber. Yeah. I guess if you had to give us, and I realize that this is very broad, but if you had to give us kind of some general guidelines for what you would recommend for a healthy gut microbiome based on the data we have now, uh, what would you recommend? I mean, as, as um, not exciting as it sounds, it's really, a, it's fiber. And, and what I like to point out about fiber is, you know, we think of fiber as a thing that old people <laughs> eat, pr <laughs> prunes and all the sort of, to just keep- makes you poop. For, for, yeah, exactly. But it's so much more. It's not just to make you poop. That's one small class of fibers. There's a whole class of fermentable fibers that you get from, you know, grains and other foods that um, feed your microbes. And fermentable fibers would be on food labels like soluble fibers, yeah, right? Yeah, would be soluble yeah. fibers, exactly. And, and so the way it works is you eat your soluble fibers um, and we're not solubilizing them. We, know, we can't break that down, but it's for our microbes. So our microbes then take the fiber. They then produce short chain fatty acids. 
um, those short chain fatty acids are absorbed by our gut epithelial cells and keeps our barrier intact and makes our gut happy. So if there's a break in any part of that chain, then you can set yourself up for intestinal inflammation and other you know, um, GI diseases. So it all ultimately, the top of the chain is fiber. So you gotta eat that fiber to keep the chain moving the way it should. So it's not just toilet paper passing through no, our, our no. system. No, you need the diversity of fiber <laughs> in your diet. Um, okay, and then how, about how much fiber do you recommend for, for someone per day? Uh, a minimum of 15 grams per day, 15 to 20 is, I think the recommendation is, is 15 to 20. Do you think that there'd be more benefits from eating more than that? Or do you think that there, is there like a cap that we know of? Uh, the cap is usually the limit of what your satiety will allow. So <laughs> I don't think there's no like health, you know, risk or health, health, you know, cap. Um, but most people are feeling, you know, pretty full if they're eating you know 25 grams of fiber per day um, mm. if you can get more in you and feel good doing it i say you know more power to you well thanks for joining us um do you have any information like do you have a social media profile or yeah. website or anything like absolutely that i'd love board? i'd love um if you guys want to follow the latest and greatest in the microbiome um, i try to post all that on my twitter which is uh suzanne devcota suzanne underscore devcota um, and we have a lab webpage just if you want to see what our lab in particular is doing, and that's www.devcotalab.com. Cool. Well, thank you, Dr. Devcota. We appreciate you coming by and educating us on the gut microbiome. Guys, if you like this video, please click like, subscribe, and remember, buy our shit.